why flows cytometry why importance of being given this particular technique because in the last two or three decades only this technology has gained a lot of momentum why it corresponds with the increase in the incidence of infertility mainly in case of human being because that species is very much important and uh, socially also it is being uh, important for that particular species when compared to the animals forget about that so what happened is i always present a particular one slide this is my signature slide wherever the presentation i go the infertility is increasing that's what everybody says last three decades almost 30 percent of the infertility cases is increasing and yes I do admit, yes, male contributes, female contributes equally, and one more God contributes, that 30%, 30%, 30% is distributed, which is unexplained, that 30%. But among the male uh, infertility, the semen-related problem, it gained a lot of momentum during the last two to three decades. Even people say that 30% of the sperm count in human being has gone down. WHO says 49 million is the cutoff, or 50 million is the cutoff. Their ML, Thermotosova is the cutoff, if you want to say this fellow is fertile. But a study conducted involving large number of population, almost 25,000 uh, men across the globe, says that the concentration, average sperm concentration is 49 million, which is the WHO. So that means something is happening, but we are not able to identify. Yes, we do some of the semen evaluation tests routinely, but why we are not able to identify? And if you see one more thing, 60% of the male infertility candidates, they have a normal spermiogram as per the sperm evaluation test that we are using now. So we could not identify, in spite of having the normal spermiogram, why they are infertile or why they are supportive. So then this thought comes, yes, there are subtle differences, subtle differences between the fertile and infertile or subfertile males. But the normal routine semen evaluation could not identify. So how to identify? There are started many, many, many tests coming in after the identification of several fluorochromes. Now you say any function of the sperm, yes, it is possible to assess. So with the development of the fluorochromes, a lot of techniques has developed, yes, fluorescent microscopy. Again, there was something because, you know, the sperm, uh, what we are assessing using the fluorocytometry is, uh, sorry, fluorescent microscopy is hardly finger countable. 200, that's what we generally use, 200, so much so per slide. But still, in spite of that, we are not able to pinpoint what is happening because we are omitting a large subpopulation. We are taking only a small population. That's how the high throughput analysis using flow cytometry came into picture. And in human being, enough number of, as, as like any other technique, we just adopt from the human being to the animal. In animal science, there is no much development on this flow cytometry until recently. Recently, there are several groups in Belgium, as well as Sweden, as well as in the USA, they are working on this flow cytometry based on analysis. Otherwise, it was not. So having uh, understood that, yes, there are subtle differences and there are subpopulations that do exist in a given ejaculate of a particular, then this technique gained a lot of momentum. And uh, almost now you can say even custom design. For example, I have identified a molecule for which antibody is not there. If I raise the antibody, I can tag it with FITSI or any other fluorochrome. Then I can analyze what is the presence or how it is present, what is the extent of the presence, how many sperm in the given population contains that molecule. So that much clarity this mission gives. This mission, I mean, I mean to say the flow cytometry technique.